Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you as always for your tweets. Ali, Stevie and Don with me to answer your questions. Let's just get a couple of business uh, matters sorted first. Don, what's that t-shirt? Because we can't see it today because you just like the bottom of the six. What is it? What are you uh, pointing to? What are you doing? My Not the plant. shirt with my name on the top. Sorry, say again. That's my Liverpool shirt with my name on the top. Oh. I'll give you a little... There you go, get it up, there, up, 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 oh, there oh, it is, oh, beautiful. There is. Oh, there is. Long sleeves, Don, Do you, did you have a choice? Uh, yes, we had a choice, I was always a long sleeve man, to be honest. You liked a long sleeve? Yeah, why? I don't know why. Why? Yeah, long sleeve, short sleeve, long sleeve, short sleeve, long sleeve, long sleeve, please. Yeah, but why? <laughs> Good answer. Good answer, Don. Warmer. Excellent. It was warmer. It was warmer. It was warmer. What, if, what, if I chose, what if I chose a short sleeve and it was freezing cold? Well, you're an athlete, like, aren't you? You're, like, like, you're supposed to be running around. Warm yourself up. I just wear it. No. Long sleeve, please. All right. I can always pull up. I can pull them up. Look, I've got these pulled up. Oh, yes. Look. Probably a See? freebie. Got, got the option. Uh, Stevie, were you short or long sleeves? Short sleeved. Of course, eh? Proper professional. <clears throat> right, Stevie, there's something that's appeared over your right shoulder, which I haven't seen before. This is new. What is it? Ooh. And let's not let's not do that game again. <laughs> let's, not, <laughs> let's not do that dance again. Uh, what is it? That one. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a decanter of sorts. What is it? Ready? <laughs> Oh, it is the uh, oh, it is the oh, Liverpool Echo Player of the Year. <laughs> again, he's done it again. He's done it again. On the shoulder, man. Uh, what Ooh. is that in there, Steve? But Stevie, don't. We're not doing this again. What are you talking about? Over your right shoulder. The, there it is, like the crystal thing. What is it? We haven't yes. seen that before. Oh. That. Yeah, yes. yes. That. Hey. No. There we go. <laughs> that is MLS Coach of MLS Coach of the Year, 2002. I thank you. Wow. Is that when you won MLS Cup? No. Nope. Next question, please. <laughs> How could you have won MLS Coach of the Year if they didn't win MLS Cup? You, you know who won it that year, Dan? Who won it? This guy! Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, Ali. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. oh, did you come off the bench? He must have come off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> so what, Stevie did off started, the pitch. I had an impact on the game. Stevie, an impact on the game. Ah, oh, what a moment. Right, fuck, guy. Yeah, right. Yeah, an impact with the ground. <laughs> Let me tell you, you fell over. Hey, Ben, if you must ask me the question, I think it's over my right shoulder that you can see the uh, medal from that MLS Cup final. Oh, yes. wow. Love it, Alex. The same. <laughs> Stevie, with Manchester United already secured the Champions League, would you play a full squad for the Europa League or give the kids the first team action? Hmm. Mm. Well, it depends. Well, it, it really depends on... on. I mean, Ollie, Ollie, on the face of it, doesn't seem to have much of an ego, unlike his predecessor, who, who couldn't wait to win the Europa League because it was silverware. Um... I would, I would guess that he would probably concentrate more on the on the Premier League, especially if, if by any chance he's he's in with a shout of, of getting anywhere close to Liverpool and City. But I think I get the impression all he's a all he's a Premier League guy, uh, and will, will try and play some younger players in the Europa League, so in depending the, on the draw, of course. Well, the draw's easy; it's Europa League. Um, look at it, Don. The final will be on the twenty eighth of August. Yeah, yeah. I I think it'll be a mix. I mean, I watched uh, Bruno Fernandez play today, and the guy looks absolutely shattered. Um, so Oli would want to win it, of course, because it, it keeps the momentum, it keeps the the good vibes. If you're a United player, a United fan, it gives you optimism to go into next season. But at the same time, you've got to get some rest in if you want to start the Premier League strong and you want to be consistent at the very start. Your very best players at some point have to have a rest. Ali, what do you think? Well, I think once you get into the final stages of the competition, I I do think that if there's an opportunity to win something and and to continue this positive momentum, I don't see anything wrong with playing your big guys. And I I, I just feel like you can manage that rest coming up in the next couple of weeks, and then after that you fire on and say, you know, guys, let's just put in with the work for ten days and see 
see what we can come up with and we get into the final stages of this competition let's go out there and win it we are manchester united after all and a club of our size of our history of our pride and everything that that comes with with being a part of manchester united i think there's a responsibility to win everything that you play in uh, this is a regular question Steve, not... that, that we have um has jesse lingard been robbed of the ballon d'or now i'm not sure if you saw this today someone had a bet we don't know the validity of it, but he bet at the start of the season 66 to 1 that Jesse Lingard wouldn't provide an assist or score a goal for the whole season, which of course was going great until the 97th minute. He had £100 at 66 to 1, would have won £670. In the end, Luke wins nothing. That's my story for the day. Well, he shouldn't oh, have put you, that Dan. bet on, should he? It's a ridiculous uh, bet. <laughs> what a ridiculous bet. What's happened to him, Don? Uh, to be honest, I'm not going to get um, stuck into Jesse too much because I listened to what he had to say in the press over the last couple of days. And I think uh, behind the scenes, I think he's, he's struggled with a little bit of turmoil, uh, family reasons. Um, at the start of the season, the midsection of the season, I was really critical because it looks as though the player's lacking so much confidence. As you know, he's, his numbers and his goals were non-existent. But after hearing the backstory over the last couple of days, um, I'll just cut him a little bit of slack. I know Ali and Stevie don't gamble. Do you gamble, Don? No, not really. I'm a bad gambler. Really? Rubbish gambler. Really? Yeah. Okay. okay, Ali, should Barcelona focus on developing their talented academy players like Puj, Fati, Ronald Rafa, instead of spending millions on big-name players? Well, I think that the development of Ricky Puj and Ansu Fati in particular is ongoing, and we are already seeing some of that uh, at the first level with Barcelona. And we've also seen what they both can bring. Now, that development is only going to continue if they continue to play and if they have important minutes. Uh, I wouldn't like to see Ricky Puch just sitting on the bench for the sake of sitting on the bench. I wouldn't like to see Ansu Fati just on the bench because Kike Setien feels like it. If there's an opportunity for these guys to be out on the field because they have a positive impact on Barcelona does, and I think they have had that impact, just continue to play this, guys. I think perhaps in the short term, it's not going to be as beneficial as the long term. And that's maybe where Kike Setien and the board have to see eye to eye and say, look, I think it's important that we play these players. We may sacrifice some things in the near term, but in the long term, Barcelona is going to be in a better place. Don, should Jack Grealish stay at Aston Villa now they've survived? No, I, I think he's far too good for that. I understand and I know that he's a Villa fan and the emotion on his face today was just sensational for him. But he honestly plays the game at a far greater level. He should be playing Champions League football. Uh, and the biggest suitors in the Premier League will come calling in the summer. It is dependent on what sort of fee Aston Villa want for him. But I think Dean Smith is realistic enough to, to, to know that he can try and generate a massive fee for him, close to £50 million, and then try and build a squad because that's what that's what Villa need. They need a they need a, a good squad. They don't need individuals. Um, be a shame for Villa fans when they do lose Jack, but he's going right to the very top. Can we have each and every single person on the ESPN FC team who picked Chelsea to finish outside the top four apologise for being wrong and give us our credit? Stevie, do you, would you like to apologise to this person for saying that Chelsea wouldn't finish in the top four? Good. Yeah, excellent. Ali, would you like to apologise? Uh, I don't even remember whether I had Chelsea in my top four or not. Um, there we go. <laughs> Good. Um, did Stevie know... Well, if you, if, if, if you must know, I lost the connection, all right? So I'm assuming you were asking me a question, right? Yes, but I played it off that you were refusing to answer because it was such a silly question. So I was trying to be professional and move it on, oh, Stevie. What but then you, it actually, it but, actually worked. But, yeah. what but then now silence, we've got you've gone was through them. there. Exactly. Gone <laughs> through the looking glass. No, I was just I've, all I've done. All I've done is you have highlighted your expertise in your position. Danny. Well, yes, Stevie, you've been very mean to me though earlier on. So there we are. Did Stevie know Virgil Van Dijk equaled his record of consecutive league appearances from the 87-89 season? Did you know that, Stevie? I did not know. No? No. Oh, heartbreak. No. How many games did you play in a row? Do you remember? I have no idea. No, I should have done some <laughs> research really before that question, but there we oh, are. Clear. Good. I, how would I know that? <laughs> I, well, no, I, yeah, that's very true. Um, can you ask Don what uh, Frank Lampard has told him about Timo Werner? He was, of course, at the game today wearing his mask incorrectly, but he was there. Yeah. 
everyone knows uh, that I'm uh, in cahoots with Frank and Jody, and they value him very highly, and they rate him very highly, uh, and they are going to build a team around him. And why not? Because he's an unbelievable player. It's just where they're going to play him. Are they going to play him off the left? Are they going to play him as a nine? But I tell you what, you know, is is teams to look forward to watching next season? Chelsea will be up there, in my opinion. Defensively, they won't, though, will they, Don? No, they won't. They'll concede 100 goals, probably. Well, good. <laughs> Maybe have a word with me. <laughs> Maybe you may want to have a conversation with Frank. I'm just saying, Don. No, because no, they're just going to score 200. Kai Havertz is in, Ziek is in, Giroud's in, Pulisic's in, oh. Werner's in, wow. Mason Mount's in. They're just going to score 200 and lose 100 goals. Perfect. Exactly. Team to watch. Stevie, was it awkward to be playing under managers who used to be your teammates? I reckon there are some players in Arsenal and Chelsea now who might be feeling the same way. Um, no, not for me. I, th I would think it would be awkward if you didn't get on when you were playing with them. Then that 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 would be even worse than just awkward. So no, I didn't have that problem. Um, I was lucky that the, the the players that I played with and and played under as a manager, I I respected them and. And so it was pretty straightforward and simple, to be to be quite frank with you. Was it because who do you play under? Graham Souness and Kenny Dalglish. Souness and Kenny Dalglish, yeah. And did you have to call them Gaffer and yeah, things so, like that? Well, the thing is, it, it it didn't change because because I was a kid when I joined. They were senior pros, right? So I kind of looked at them as though, even when they were the manager. I kind of looked at looked at them the very same way. So it didn't affect me in any shape or form whatsoever. Don, did you ever play under somebody that you played with? I did. I played under um, or played with Nigel Spackman at uh, Sheffield United. He, then he got the manager's job. Um, but Nigel um, was very experienced. He he wasn't particularly bothered about players calling him gaffer, but we did out of respect. It's just a it's just a way in England. Um, I'm not sure what it's like on the continent where you call him coach, but we were always it was always a boss or a gaffer. So uh, yeah, I played with uh, and under Nigel. Ali, did you ever resent calling someone a boss? or a coach who you didn't respect? Well, I I don't know if it's a cultural thing, but you don't go around the locker room here in the US uh, calling them, hey, coach, how are you, sir? Um, <laughs> it's, not, it, it's not quite the way things are done. And so and there isn't a term like gaffer either. So um, yeah, I, I, I didn't call anybody that. and. But they had my respect so long as they were doing their job correctly, that's all. Yeah, it's a thin line in Ali's respect world. Uh, did everyone call you co <laughs> coach when you were at the Revs, Stevie? Hi. Yeah. Yeah, most of a lot of the, the, the younger uh, American boys who that's exactly the term they use with it, with their coach at, at college or whatever it was. Some of the older ones like Raleigh would, would call me gaffer just for a laugh because that's, as Don said, that's what they, that's the kind of, uh, culture at home uh, and actually some some called me Steve and, and I actually didn't care what they called me uh, as long as they did it in a, in a respectful manner and as long as they were putting it in and training and doing it on the field they could call me anything they like but as soon as they were garbage and then I'd be doing the throat. Thank you very much gentlemen as always uh, thanks for your tweets keep them coming in at ESPN FC we're back with more tomorrow be sure to join us then. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.